Hello, we're here for another episode of Festival Forum. I'm your host, Nick Davies, and I'm here with Michael Eklund, who is the star of the film Edward. Michael. Hi. Good to see you again. Yeah, good to see you too. So, uh, tell me, this film, there's a lot to talk about. Yeah, there is. A lot is. of history. Yeah, hundreds uh, of years of history. Hundreds of years of history. And I think what's most fascinating about it, and what people probably don't realize, is that a part of the film is really about how motion pictures even started. It's, uh, yeah, it's the very thing what this movie is about. Without Edward Mybridge, there would be, well, I wouldn't say if there would, would not be motion pictures, but it may have taken longer. He was uh, the godfather of uh, movies, so he was the, uh, the source where it all came from, so. So when were you first approached for this project? Uh, two years ago. It was, uh, it was in LA, and it was around March. 2013 and Kyle Rideout, the director, sent me the script. My agent called and told me I should read this script and I did what I do with most scripts. I shelved them, put them on a big pile of scripts I'm meant to read and I get through eventually. Uh, then a couple weeks went by my agent called me again and said you really have to read this script and I took her word for it and cracked the script and I read it and fell in love with it immediately. Then I had a Skype interview with uh, the director Kyle Rideout and the producer Josh Epstein and we went from there and they asked me to play the role of Edward and I jumped at the chance and we had a few months to prepare and shot it in Vancouver, Canada in July. What was it about the role that, that sparked your interest? S simple. I had never heard of the character and the man Edward Mybridge in my life. Um, and after I read the script, I was surprised that the story had never been told before. It was one of the most interesting and, you know, provoking stories I've ever heard about a real-life guy. And I was surprised that this movie has never been made before. The story has never been told before. And this was a chance to do that for the first time, was to tell this man's story, which I think he deserves because, you know, people should know who Edward Mybridge is. I agree. Anybody that loves film, I think, needs to know the, the gen. Film, art, movie. photography, um, anyone who just appreciates, you know, basically art and, and movement, too. Dancers, you know, everyone should know who Edward Mybridge is. He kind of started it all. That's incredible. You know, I, I didn't really think about it in that perspective, but it is quite true. And, and um, Cartoonists use his work still today. They, use, they reference his photography to show the body and the movement of the body and, you know, animation and, and cartoon work still. And there was a famous bet, too, be between Stanford and another gentleman, correct, on, yeah. on if a horse is in full gallop, if a horse, all four hoofs left the ground. The bet was Leland Stanford um, was uh, contracted to hire Mybridge to get the photo that proves that all four hooves leave the ground. Because with the human eye, you can never see if you know, the horse actually you know, left the ground with all four hooves. And so he contracted Edward to figure out a way to capture that photo. And so he lined up 12 to 24 cameras in a row. And as the horse ran by, it would trigger the shutters. And he captured one photo that showed all four hooves off the ground. And Leland Stanford won that bet. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. And thus began... Uh, thus began. The that's name of Edward Mybridge. That was a famous photo. That, uh, most people know about that photo. And then when you start talking about Edward, you know, then it seems to spark some kind of memory of all because of that photo. So you had to, you had to do quite a bit of research, I'm sure, for this role and, and preparation. What, what went into that? Well, geez, we had uh, you know, a few months to prepare, and so I basically cracked every book I could find and every website that uh, was available and to learn about who this man was. And most of the uh, material out there is a lot about his work, you know, the photos, the, the subjects in the photos. But what I was looking for was the, the material about the man who he was because there is no documented proof or you know evidence of who he was like any video or anything that you could watch so I basically had to create him from my own imagination so I was anything I could find that would give me any kind of clue of who he was I would you know latch onto that and it's very little very little out there um, but there's enough and there's still research to be done we shot the movie a year and a half ago and I'm still researching the man it's just endless you know you find out so much more as you go on and it's just He's a fascinating guy. Were there any other artistic influences that, that you brought to the character because you didn't have that kind of access to the personal side of him? I basically studied the photos that he took and more his self-portraits. You know, there's a lot of uh, details within the self-portraits that he done of himself. And I kind of, you know, 
got into his headspace looking at photos of him, how he sat, how he walked, how he, you know, shook people's hands, how he, uh, you know, it's just his posturing. And um, that tells a lot about a person. You know, even how he dressed, you know, he rolls his sleeves up with his suits. And so, you know, it kind of gives you, a, you know, some kind of direction to go in. And then basically when I researched that he had brain damage, you know, he uh, had a prefrontal cortex damage to his brain, I started researching that and what that does to a person. And then that just, you know, everything blew up from there and I just kind of started building the character from uh, that. That's incredible. Did you, uh, did you also get into photography quite a bit on your own? I took photography years ago growing up. I studied art. I was going to be a painter when I was growing up. I went to art school first and then got into acting later. And so uh, I've always had a, a fascination with all art, you know, whether it's painting, photography, or acting. And even with acting, I still feel like I'm still painting portraits just with uh, in the, you know, acting side of things now. Um, so, yeah, I've always been, you know, fascinated with all areas of art. Can you talk about some of the themes in the film uh, that are very prevalent? In our film, it's basically, you know, it's the love story between Edward Mybridge and Flora. You know, it was, uh, um, you know, we shot so much other material for the film, the, the Leland Stanford bet. We shot the, the history of Edward, you know, leading up to that point. But then we decided to just focus on, you know, this, the love relationship that he had for this woman. And so that's a very strong theme was um, love and jealousy and, um, you know, a, a woman who also has been forgotten about by a man who was so obsessed with his work and so committed to his work and what he was trying to achieve that um, it kind of drove them apart in the end. And so that's one of the strongest themes in the film was work versus love, commitment versus love. Always yeah. a good, powerful story. Very think, powerful. For any film. Anyone, still today, you know. Do you have, uh, what are some of your, your favorite films that possibly you drew inspiration to as well, to this picture? I tried not to watch other films that had anything to do with the story matter. I tried to just, you know, use what we had. Uh, the script was powerful enough. It was all in the script. You know, the script that Kyle and Josh wrote, uh, all the information you needed was there. And then Kyle's vision for the movie was already there and I, di I didn't want to influence with other ideas from other movies or other characters that I've seen. Um, probably because this, you know, Edward Mybridge character has never been portrayed before so I didn't want to borrow, as we actors call it, from another source. I wanted to try to create something that was uh, straight from the imagination. Um, tell me, um, what was it like working with Kyle as a director, the, the creative process between the two and, and the, the chemistry on set? We I connected know. right away. This is Kyle Rideout's first film, first feature film, which uh, was very ambitious. When I read the script, I was like, how is this guy going to pull it off? And, and a first time director. And he did two short films that he sent me and they just blew my mind. They were two of the best short films I've probably ever seen. And they were just so magical and filled with so much heart and humanity and life and so I thought if he even gets close to what he did in these short films with the Edward film then I'm on board and sure enough he showed up on set and he is you know if this is his calling card film then it's uh, it's a f great first film to start out on you know because he just knocked it out of the park and it's just you know the feedback we're getting is just that it's just a, a beautiful film and that's what he was going for and I think that's uh, you know what we accomplished and then just working together we just clicked you know he would come over to me wouldn't have to say anything and I would know exactly what he wanted and what he was thinking and I was like I got it I know what you're coming over here for and we'd go from there and uh, yeah very talented guy and Josh too Josh Epstein too both of them together they're a team and they're a force to be reckoned with that's that's incredible to be able to have that kind of symmetry with oh. a director where it really isn't work I think at that point no. for, for you is it is it just you're going in and you're gonna become this person and yeah and they allowed that you know freedom to do that for all the characters you know that's what they wanted that was our job to do was to you know bring the work to set that day and um, and they were just fun you know they're, they're they're great guys too and they're very very intelligent too and they've been traveling with this story for years because they did the stage production of it originally and then they bought the rights to the play and developed it into a movie so with their intelligence based on the the subject matter you know I was in good hands as well so 
I brought what I learned and they brought what they learned and we collaborated together and that was basically what this whole movie is really about was a collaboration process with everyone, the cast and the crew. You know, everybody had different levels of uh, experience from none to professional and we all just worked as a team and got it done and that was one of the things I remember most about making this film was it was a fun collaboration between everyone. You know, everybody was there because of the passion of the story. It wasn't based on money or anything from that value. It was just the passion and wanting to tell the story. Excellent. Mm. Well, you know, we're in a very interesting uh, point in film right now where digital capture has become the, the norm for filmmaking. And it's quite interesting because, you know, this is a film about a photographer, of course, that's, that's shooting on film. And, and uh, what is your impression of digital in terms of as an actor, do you like working with digital? Have you worked with film before? And, and what are some of the differences and the, the challenges with that? Well, yeah, we, st we all started off in film. When I started acting was 16, 17 years ago, and we were still shooting on film. And there was still a, a romance to that. You know, there's, a, and, and uh, you, you didn't have film to waste. You know, every shot was valuable. I miss that, you know. Now it's digital, it's more expendable, but I don't really have an opinion either way because it's not like I, I'm going to change anything. It, it's on course, but if you compare it to the Edward film, that's what that movie was about too. It was, uh, you know, technology was changing. It was being uh, improved. It was being, uh, you know, what Edward created and then to what we have today. It's the natural path of what we're on. I'm more interested in what's going to come after digital, you know. Um, but it doesn't change what I do, and acting is acting, whether it's on film or digital. You know, my job stays the same. How they capture it, that's somebody else's job. Did they ever, uh, were they the type of filmmakers that reviewed takes on set, or was that reserved for later in the process? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I don't remember watching any playback. We didn't have time, really. We, we shot this film in a very small amount of time, and each day was action-packed. We, 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 we couldn't sit back and watch playback a lot and seeing if the scene you know worked or not we, we just felt it and um, and it changes sometimes I like watching you know playback for a very specific scene and this movie it was more about just feeling it and we all kind of knew when we had it and when we didn't and we would work it until we had it right um, yeah so playback was you know it was happening while we were doing it interesting so, uh, do you have any favorite moments while shooting? Any particular memories that are, that are quite fun? I mean, it sounds like you had an amazing experience on the film um, all around with your collaboration, but is there any moments that kind of stick out in your brain as just, I'm going to remember that for the rest of my life? I guess, you know, you know e each scene is very special to me for its each, you know, reason. But I think we all can agree there was the, the, the last day on the film was very special for all of us because we shot the movie in Vancouver, Canada and we shot the beginning of the film on the very last day and we, the cast, the crew, everyone, we had to hike two hours up to the top of a mountain and the mountain in Vancouver is called The Chief and if you, you know Vancouver you know this mountain and it's a very intense climb to the top of this mountain so we had to carry our camera gear, we had to ca carry our costumes, everybody had to work together and carry everything to the top of this mountain and then shoot a movie. And that's what Edward did. So we all kind of felt like in a small way we were experiencing what this one man did on his own back in the 1800s. You know, he carried his gear up mountains to get these shots. That's what we were doing to get this shot in this film. And then we got to the top of the mountain, we had to, you know, shoot the first, you know, scene of the film. and. Uh, I think that day was very special for us because it was the end of the movie. We also felt like we were experiencing in somewhat what Edward would have done and what he would have wanted. And so, and we just kind of felt it when you're on top of a mountain doing what this guy did. Hundreds of years later, him taking wet plate photography, we're shooting it on red cameras now. You know, not a lot has changed within a hundred and a few years, right? But we're all doing the same thing that he did. You know, and so in a way, we're telling his story by living his story as well. So that day, we all kind of felt it was very special. And then when we finished that day, it was, you know, it was, it's always a sad moment when the film is done, especially when you feel like you're doing something important. And uh, then it was the hike down the mountain with all the gear and uh, working together to do that. And 
yeah, that's the day that kind of sticks out, I think, for all of us. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Let's take a look at some scenes from Edward. Gentlemen and ladies, the extraordinary, the incomparable, the father of photography, I give you Mr. Edward Mybridge. I would like to see the in-between, to see what's invisible. I can't stop. I always seem to want more. Do you know what I mean? Yes, I do. Smile. I will create the world's first encyclopedia of motion. Excuse me, who are you? You see things other people don't. So are you dissecting life? That makes up life. Why are you always staring? It's strange. It's strange, anyway. From this moment forward, we only photograph nude subjects. Did you see each other? Could I see who? You stay away from my wife. We're back, and I want to thank Michael so much for being here. It was a pleasure talking with you about this film. Uh, it sounds like an incredible film. I can't wait to watch it myself. It was an incredible film and an incredible experience, too, to make the film. So I just hope that everybody enjoys it and uh, gets the word out about the film, because, again, this guy's story needs to be heard and told. So I agree. Yeah. Thank Thanks you for so having much. me, too. This was Absolutely. Great. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is what you missed today at the festival. We're here with Ian Gomez, one of the stars of the movie Worthy that's going to be premiering tonight. You got to tell us about this movie. How'd you feel? Um, I felt great. You know, as, uh, I was telling the director, it's one of the, the rare occasions where everyone on the set is so warm and happy and filled with positive energy that I was walking around a little confused. I was like, wait, this is not right. Someone should be upset. Someone should be panicked. <laughs> Someone should be concerned about time and and, and money. And but everything was like it was the easiest going shoot I've ever been on in my life. And um, and I think it shows. Okay. Hopefully it shows. I haven't seen the film. Okay. But the, everyone was so positive. It was wonderful. I mean, from from the director and the writer and the, uh, the star to all the producers and the PAs. It was just like this, it was like tiny, uh, happy, shiny people. And it was, I, I, I was like, maybe, maybe I'm the jerk. <laughs> so like, there's always one jerk somewhere and it's, it, was like, it must be me because everyone else is so nice. But you didn't start up any drama or anything, right? I tried. I tried to start drama, like, where's my chair? And they're like, here's a chair. I'm like, oh, okay. Um. Um, I don't have enough cold water. Oh, there's cold water here. It was, but everyone was so great. And um, I was just talking to Mitch, one of the producers. And he's like, I would love to play again. I'm like, I please call me for anything. You know, we can, you know, play some putt putt or something. I don't care. I just want to be with you people. You're fantastic. You got it. So we're here at the Newport Beach Film Festival in Newport Beach. I know. At you got Fashion uh, Square, right? F Fashion Island is Fashion right next door. Right. right. I know. Everything circles around Fashion since, Island. Since you were driving around, tell me a couple of things that you noticed that caught your eye and you love about Newport Beach. Uh, a lot of blondes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen any stray dogs yet. Okay. I think they're all taken care of. Um, it's uh, great. Uh, I got here without going through the toll road. I mean, my day's been perfect so far. It's wonderful. That's awesome. And, uh, you know, Newport Beach is great. I, got <laughs> I was here a long time ago to have my body scan for tumors, <laughs> and I didn't have any then. I don't have any now. It's great. Okay, so it's bringing you good news. Yes. You got Newport it. Beach has been always been very good luck for me. Awesome. Ian, well, congratulations on your premiere and your success. Thank you very much. Have a Thank great you. night. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ian Gomez, and you're watching Newport Beach TV. So, guys, um, we're here in Newport Beach, beautiful city. You got to tell me what you love about it. Oh my gosh! I mean, the people are, are some of the nicest people that I've I've talked to. I mean, we came down from LA. It's not 
that far, but it's like, it's just beautiful here and it's so like relaxed. Everyone's been so gracious. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's been nothing but a pleasure to be here and the weather is phenomenal. You gotta tell everybody. What about you? Um, just being able to like smell the ocean air is quite wonderful. But yeah, like Mitch said, I mean, everybody at the festival has been just wonderful to talk to and to like hang out with. And you know, it's just been, uh, they've been the highlight of this trip. That's mm -hmm. awesome, guys. Well, congratulations to you both. This Thank has been you. a true success, honestly. It's gonna be a great night for you guys. It Thank is. you so much. Great. I love Newport Beach. We're here with Lizzie Velasquez, and she's here with her film, A Brave Heart, The Lizzie Velasquez Story. Lizzie, how are you doing today? I'm doing really, really well. Really excited. You excited to be here in Newport Beach? Yes, this is my first time here. And uh, tell me, what's your impression so far of, of the city and, and the festival and everything that's going on? It's going to be hard for me to leave because it is gorgeous. I live in Texas, so this weather does not exist in Texas, so it's incredible. Yes, it, it's nice to have that ocean close by, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's like a soothing sound machine, but it's a real-life ocean. <laughs> have you had a chance to actually go out and do a little bit of sightseeing and enjoy uh, the city? Not so much. I got to go to the beach for a little while today, and it was gorgeous. Excellent. Okay, well, hey, let's talk about the film. How did this whole film start? About a year ago, Sarah Bordeaux, our director, called me and said, I have this crazy idea to do a film about your life and told me, don't answer me yet and think about it. And I said, my answer is yes, I'm in. She said she wanted to shine a brighter light on my story and give me a bigger stage to share it. And I knew right away that she was the perfect person to do this, to learn very quickly that if I couldn't accept myself from the inside out, I wouldn't be able to help anyone else. And I think we're all, we all have that inside of us. You just have to be ready and willing to accept it and take it in. So are you hoping uh, that this, this film reaches a mass audience and it, it actually brings a lot of awareness to this issue that really, quite frankly, doesn't get a lot of an attention, not nearly enough attention as it deserves? Oh, absolutely. One of my favorite things about this film is it is my face on the screen and it is my personal story, but it's every single person that's watching it. It's their story. All you have to do is put your face on the screen and you can relate to it or relate to a family member who went through something like this. And I hope so, I, I just hope that as many people can see it around the world, no matter how or when they see it, I hope that they do. And I hope that it, it's not just a movie that they watch and think, oh, that was good. I hope it's a movie that they watch and they're inspired and leave a little bit angry and angry to make a change for other people. That's our show today. I'd like to thank our guest, Michael Eklund from the film Edward. I invite you to check back. We update our videos every day. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Visit Newport Beach. And this is Nick Davies for another episode of Festival Forum. See you next time.